Hello, everyone. My name is Jose Simonelli, and welcome to a Red Hat Consulting Whiteboard Sessions. I have Ian Tewksbury here, and we're actually going to talk about Shadow IT. So, the first question you have to ask yourself is, why do you have Shadow IT? And the reason when you start talking to your teams, if we go in and start talking to a customer that they ended up with Shadow IT, is because a development team, an operations team, someone wanted some tool to make their day-to-day -day job easier, and they didn't have it. And so, they just spun it up. Right? They just got it working to get that part of their day out of the way so they could do what their real job is. So what are some of the problems with that? Well, so if someone just spins up a chat server so they can start talking to their teammates and just spun it up on some virtual machine somewhere that they could spin up, it hasn't been security checked. It doesn't have any password authentication probably. So it's skipping business processes or security processes that are already established in the organization, right? Yes, so you're, you're skipping out on all, all that important security and business process part, but the people are enabling themselves to do their jobs, so they're trading off. And they're not always aware that they're trading off. So how do you actually bring that back into the umbrella of the organization? So the first thing you gotta do is you gotta find out, you gotta audit and find out what's out there, right? What are, what are your teammates doing and why are they doing it? So. The first thing to do is do an inventory of everything that's out there. So CloudForms is a good tool for doing that because it can plug into your internal cloud and your external cloud providers and see what virtual machines are out there, who they're owned by, and a lot of the times what they're being used for. But sometimes it doesn't necessarily mean that actually creating the service and just leaving it out there. Uh, it, it could also mean that um, not also just the process as well, but also, um, you know, you have the inventory, you know that they're there, but you don't even know what's going on within each of those servers already out there in AWS or Azure or whatever, right? Yeah, so once you run the inventory of your external cloud provider, whether it's Azure or whether it's AWS or your internal cloud provider, whether it's Rev or OpenStack or VMware, that's going to tell you what VMs are. You might be able to get some information just off the VM names. Joe's Slack server, might be able to figure out what that is. Depending on the cloud provider, CloudForms can also tell you what's running on there. So you can write reports that look for certain things. So look for running Apache services, look for people who have root on servers. You can write those kind of reports depending on the cloud provider, depending on how you have things integrated. And then once you start getting that inventory and figure out what things are being used for, who owns them, a lot of times you're at least going to be tagged with who owns the server. So at the very worst, if it's just named Server ABC, owned by Joe, you can go over to Joe's desk and be like, what is this server for? but you don't want to blame them for this server being created. They didn't create it for um, malicious purpose. They created it to make their job easier, to get their job done for you. So you're just finding out what it's for for now. And then later, we're going to start dealing with it. So, all right, you assessed, you have a whole list of systems you have. Now you have to go talk to the CTO or CIO. How do you provide, how do you give them the, the value add of these tools so that they can be included in their new env environment? Yeah, so what I would suggest you do is you take all the different tools that you found, all the shadow IT you found out there, and you categorize it, right? So you've got servers being used for source control, you've got servers being used for team collaboration, you've got servers being used for developers to just play on, right? You kind of categorize that all, and then you figure out why those came into existence and where the gap is between your official IT and the shadow IT, and you start to try to address that. So teams started spinning up chat servers because they didn't have a good way to talk to each other. Well, you ended up with three different chat servers, none of them security baseline. So you start off a project that says, okay, obviously our teams need chat servers to collaborate well together. Let's spin up an official one, put the security on it, hook it in with our uh, credential system, and then you just basically go down the list of everything that people have spun up, and you just start creating an official version of it that's not getting in people's way and transition them off their old servers to the new one. And at the end of the day, they're going to appreciate this because now they don't have to manage their servers anymore that they were managing. They can just do their job. Yeah, I've always found that the, it, the education is probably the, the biggest obstacle because of the ease of use. They just found a lot of documentation. They could just go do it on their own and maybe there's not enough resources in an internal lab so that they can do that. So, uh, But there's uh, different levels of education from the CTO on showing value of why all these tools are important, but then down to even the uh, engineer or developer to be like, hey, that is valuable. Let's actually use that. Let's help me sell that to the CTO to make sure that you have that environment for yourself. Yeah, you really need to start the conversation between the two different levels, because at the, the top, at the CTO level, 
you have someone who's concerned that you've got all these tools you don't know about, possibly running in an unsecure way, and you've got people doing you know, the hands-on keyboard work who are using these tools to be productive. And if you just carte blanche, take them away, you're going to kill your productivity mm -hmm. and bring down morale. So you don't want to do that, but you also don't want to be running in an insecure way. So educating your, your users on the need for security throughout your infrastructure, but then also saying, hey, but we understand you need these tools and you want these tools and you're using them for good purposes. Let's work together to build safer solutions. So would you say shadow IT is a good thing or a bad thing? I would say it's an indicator uh, that you have gaps in your infrastructure that you can then start addressing. Yep. So it's neither positive nor negative. It, it's an indicator that there's something else in your infrastructure that you need to work on, and it's, it's not an unmanageable task. All right, Ian, thank you very much for all this information. I think we reviewed a lot of different things, uh, not just about the different tools that some people have been using, but also how you talk to the CTO and the engineer to make sure you, we incorporate this in their actual infrastructure. So. Thank you, everyone, for watching this. Uh, if you have additional questions, please reach out to Red Hat Consulting or go out to our website and review some of this information. Thanks.